Baker's Gas, and we're here today with uh, to talk about TIG welding for beginners, right? So if you just bought a TIG welder, um, you know you got a little job coming up and you gotta try TIG welding it, and you don't know what to buy, you don't know what tungsten to buy, you don't know what filler to buy, uh, that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna talk about some of the new beginner stuff or what I recommend that you should get just on a beginner basis, right? And this is just brand new, you didn't ever do it before, but you bought a machine and you're gonna try it out. So to dive right in, I know we have a couple of bundle packages out there. We'll link all that below with tungsten, filler, and uh, some other different consumables on there, right? A TIG rod and tube holders, uh, what gloves to buy, that sort of thing. And you might have already bought all this stuff, but I just want to give you a recommendation here. So a couple of things that we wanted to talk about were tungsten. This is always the biggest question of what tungsten should I buy. So we got three different types here. So we got lanthanated, thoriated, and seriated. Now you're gonna say, this kid's crazy. What is the difference between the two? So here's my recommendation, and take it with a grain of salt, but seriated is probably one of the best all around, easy to use, easy to sharpen for brand new beginners, right? So it'll do AC and DC. It is a very versatile tungsten. Now, is it the best one out there? I don't think it's the best, but it does work very, very well. Um, it holds up good. And it's just an all-around great time. So I got some 332nd here. Why I like 332nd is because you can kind of push that to the 150, 160 amp range, and you can go all the way down low amperages to you know 30, 35, 40, somewhere in that range. You know, and it's very good. Some people say, well, I only do 16, you know, 116th, or I only do 8th inch. Yeah, those are great. This is just a good medium in the middle of the road tungsten. I like 332nd. Works great. Thoriated. Awesome tungsten, works great. Uh, does AC, does DC. Starts a little bit harder than ser serrated tungsten. Um, sharpens a little bit harder than that too, but it holds up a lot better. So it is a little bit harder. And I say that it, it, it isn't harder than the serrated, but it does have a little bit better characteristic properties when holding up when you're welding with it. Um, it works well. I like that tungsten. And then lanthanated. Been growing in popularity. Um, so a lot of people that have been buying it, a lot of stainless guys, a lot of like nine chrome or high alloy stuff, they like it because it holds up better. It's got a stable arc, especially on some stainlesses or some high chromium steels. Um, it holds up a lot better and it, and it does work really well. So it cuts down on arc strikes, that sort of thing. And I know I'm diving deep in the weeds on that one. So, but the lanthanated does work well. And then the sets, I totally confuse you with that. We sell a mixed pack right here. So you have lanthanated, pure, thoriated. We have a multi-mix and then we have serrated. So this one has four different types of tungsten. I'm sorry, five different types of tungsten. And you can try each one of the ones I just talked about plus multi-mix, which is just a multi-mix of, it's a blend of cerium and some other elements in there. Just try it out and see how it is. And then pure, Pure is, is, is losing in popularity, but I mean, it's still used out there uh, because if I can go to seriated, I don't need Pure. Right? Pure is a, was a, uh, for aluminum only, on older style transformer machines. Uh, and it was very, very popular for a very long time. It, it's still popular, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying when you go to an inverter machine, you're better off running seriated or thoriated tungsten on that. It's gonna hold up better. Uh, it's just gonna run a lot better too. Um, but don't no, give that, that multi-pack a try. We'll link that all down below. Now, on filler material, one thing that I always recommend, so people always have, I got to take well an aluminum trailer fender or something. Well, I do have, we do have one pound packs. This is 4043, and they're again 332nd diameter. Great all around size. Um, you might want to jump up to a bigger size depending on what you're welding, but this is uh, very versatile. You can weld on them trailer fenders. Uh, it'll run on majority of aluminum product, except for like structural aluminum. We're gonna need to go to another 5356, but this is just a good all around. It'll get you to where you need to be. Another good all around is a ER70S6 TIG rod. This is a one pound pack too, we'll link that in, down below. Um, just a good all around mild steel if you weld the bike frame back together or you gotta fix some little steel widget that you had. That'll get you out of the woods there, so that's a good pack to have. Um, now diving in a little deeper, we've got two different types of stainless here, both one pound packs, 309 and 308. 
So if you got something stainless, some sort of, I don't know, kitchen table or sink or something that's got a crack in it and you want to weld it back together, you know that's stainless, you want to run 308, which is a stainless to stainless filler material. So when you got a stainless table and you're welding something stainless to it, you need 308 to do that job. Um, and that's a good one pound package right there that'll, that'll get you a lot of stainless welding, believe it or not. And that doesn't look like many rods, but that'll do it. Um, and then 309 is good for dissimilar metals, right? So if we're doing some sort of steel to stainless and we want to attach those two pieces, 309 is what you need because usually the steel has less chrome than the stainless. So this gives it an extra little bit of chromium, so it melts in there better. Uh, your structural property is still there. Uh, but yeah, 309, you can also do some cast and this cast iron, cast steels with this 309. I'm not recommending that's the way to do it, but it will do it in a pinch and it does work. Um, you just need a little bit of preheat. So those two stainlesses are very popular, uh, but I, like I said, I'd always recommend a 308 because you, know, you might get into like a inside kitchen sink or some sort of van hood or something and it's all stainless, you're gonna need 308 for that. Um, but if you're just brand new TIG welding, man, I have those three packages right there, 308, ER70S6, and 4043, I'm going to say that's going to do probably 90, 95% of what you're going to get yourself into, just trying to learn how to TIG weld. And then with the multi-mix pack there, I'd get that, just so you can try them all out. But like I said, it's not a bad idea, I'm telling you, Seriate, it is a very versatile tungsten, it holds up good. Um, and another thing too is, is sharpening your tungsten. Um, and we'll link that down below as well. Uh, we have several tungsten sharpeners. Uh, we did a couple other videos on those as well. So check those out, because you're gonna need to sharpen that tungsten. Um, and it's, I see a lot of people using hand grinders and turning them different ways and spinning it. That's tough. The tungsten grinders for the extra 400 bucks and you just got a smoking deal on your TIG machine, so just buy one, use it, it works great. It's a whole lot safer than you trying to do it on a pan grinder. So recommend a tungsten grinder, a multi-mix pack, and then these three filler materials here. Uh, now we sell it in multi-pound packages too, right? You can buy this and it comes in there. We'll link that down below. Uh, it has all the storage tubes and everything. So if you got any questions, comments, leave them down below. I hope I answered everyone's questions on just a beginning TIG welding session. Um, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for some more.